help open our hearts to our message today. Amen. I am. I'm going to have Karen and Wendy come on up. I know this is unusual, but we're um, Karen and Wendy just returned home last Sunday from Peru. Woohoo! They were on a mission trip. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about missions. That's part of what our sermon is today. And House asked me to kind of interview them. And they don't know what, what questions I'm going to ask them. Hmm. Because I didn't know what questions I was letting the Holy Spirit talk to me about that. Um, so you went to Peru. What were your expectations going? Okay. Well, Karen was very good about telling me what to expect. And that helped a lot. She told me it was going to be hot, it was going to be humid, there would be showers, and there would be air conditioning, and that's really all I knew <laughs> going into it. Um, but also that it was a medical mission trip, and I'm not a medical professional. They let me wear the scrubs. Do you like our couture? <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, there, there's plenty for people to do who are not medical professionals. So I was very happy that there was a role for somebody who doesn't know anything about medicine. Very good. So as you got there, um, what did you notice about the area that you're in? Um, and what was, the, what was God showing you? What was the Holy Spirit showing you? Well, first of all, we were in a city called Tarapoto, which is one hour flight south of Lima. You've probably heard of Lima. And no, we were nowhere near Machu Picchu. Okay, this was not a tourist trip anyway. Um, because everybody asks that question. Tarapoto is a city about the same size as Huntington Beach, but it's very concentrated, it's very busy, it's very loud, it's, it's um, definitely more of a business area, definitely not a tourist town, I would say. But uh, the first three days of our mission, we were in what they called a neighborhood, which really felt like we were in a completely different village. And it was a village of incredible poverty, where people have just like put together shacks as their homes. And um, it is, is like in the, it makes you think, feel like you're in the Amazon jungle because um, the city itself is on a plateau, but we were up, up high on the hills. And the poverty is intense, but the people are just beautiful. They're just, they're kind and they're patient and they share everything they have. And yeah, they were so loving to us and, and so grateful for everything we could bring them. So that was, that was wonderful. I've never seen an American wait eight hours in line and not get upset. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> that is very true. Um, Karen, when you have new people coming on mission trips with you, because you've done a million, I mean, you've done a little less than a million, but you go quite often. You go two, three times a year, or seven, or, seven <laughs> or eight. She goes a lot. It depends on the year, obviously. Um, for a new person coming on a mission trip, um, how do you get them prepared? I mean, I know Wendy told us a little bit, but how do you pr prepare them, but also for yourself to welcome new people in and get them comfortable? Because going to a country like Peru into poverty like that is very different from what we're used to. And it can be very strange and unsettling when you first walk into it, because I've been there. So um, how do you prepare them for that? Well, number one, this is what happens when you take your pastor's wife with you. You have to stand in front of everyone. So I just wanted to do that disclaimer. The thing is, is that I don't prepare anybody God does. I feel that God calls people to go on mission trips. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Some people, they love the mission trips and they come back and some don't. And that's all God's doing. I have very little to do with that and we're all thankful for that as well. But to me, to, to just love people. I love the mission field. I love the people at Terrapoto. I've been there probably eight or nine times now. And I don't do anything. I, you know, I'm kind of along for the ride. I believe in that fasten your seatbelt, you're on Mr. Toad's wild ride. God's in charge. And you see God everywhere you go. You see him at LAX, believe it or not, God is at LAX. 
You see him on the plane where you have a captive audience and you get to talk to people about God who can't get up because their seat belted in. And then you get to Terrapoto where people really want to embrace you. They want to love you. We work with a great country host that will really welcomes everyone, but I do very little. She does a lot. God does use her to do a lot. She just is very humble and won't tell you um, because it is God at control. What, tell us what this trip was about and what, how many people did you see? What did you provide for them and um, what did they experience? Okay, so this is a short-term medical mission, and what we do is we do a short-term medical clinic five days a week. We do it Monday through Friday, and people come to the clinic, and generally we have two or 300 people waiting for us when we arrive at 8 o'clock or 8.30 in the morning. <coughs> they wait eight hours in line to be seen by an American doctor. We have a couple of American doctors with us. We have a dentist with us. We have some of the Peruvian doctors that work alongside of us. We have some nurses that triage them. We don't do anything invasive because that kind of goes against the Peruvian government unless you're licensed as a physician there. So we don't do anything um, invasive. And the medications we give them, you can actually go into the pharmacy and buy over the counter. You don't need a prescription like any antibiotics or you know any of those kind of things that we need a prescription here for. They don't. And those are the kind of medications that we provide. But we also provide evangelism. Every person that comes to the clinic gets evangelized before they get their medicine. They get evangelized, and you would be amazed at the people that know Jesus but don't have a relationship with him. And when we do the evangelism, some of them don't have a Bible that they can read in their language. So we give them a Bible that's in Spanish. We also found out on this trip, there's an app for it, go figure that we can go ahead and download Bibles for them. We don't have to carry them with us anymore. We can download on their phone, because most people have a phone, of a Spanish version of the Bible. So those are the kind of things that we do in the clinic. And you see God everywhere, in all sizes and shapes. Starts from very baby on to people in their 80s and 90s coming and waiting for the clinic. How many people did you see? Oh, we saw over 850 people. Um, yeah, and we treated a lot of them for hypertension, for diabetes, a lot of skin disease, as you can imagine, because of the sun there. So a lot of those types of things that we treated them for that they weren't aware of. Now, they can go into their pharmacy if they have the money for it, and they can buy that medication over the counter. They don't need to see a doctor. Which is awesome. Um, Wendy, what, was, what did you get to do while you were there? And um, what were your interactions with the people? I was very fortunate. I got to work with Karen. Karen was our in charge person in the pharmacy section. And uh, she just basically taught us really quickly how to assemble the right meds for the, the prescriptions. And uh, we were also really blessed. We had a lot of interpreters. Every single person there had an interpreter available. So that is very helpful because I went there with almost no Spanish at all. And um, I don't know if you know this, but George, one of our interpreters, is offering Spanish lessons online, and I'm going to be taking him now. But those interpreters are really good in English and in Spanish, and they really helped us. Because we would assemble the medications, and then we would put them in front of Karen, and Karen would double check to make sure we got it right. And sometimes we didn't. Sometimes we were giving like an adult dose to a child. So it was really good that she was checking everything so that we could get it right. We'd hand it over to the translators, and they would pa pass out the meds, uh, also teaching the patients how to use them, how to apply them, how often to use them, all that sort of thing, which is equally important to the medication is how to use it. So those interpreters were just invaluable. And so that's kind of what I did, just assembling. And Karen was very generous about that. She was like, any time you need a break, go take one and walk around. So I got to hold cute little babies and you know, just kind of interact with people or just walk up and down the street. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I posted videos of what that place looked like. And if you haven't seen it, I, I hope you'll try or just reach out to me, I'll show you. Because once you see that place, your heart sort of breaks for them and you wanna do everything you can to help them. What would you tell someone if they were thinking about going on a mission trip how would, you, how would you tell them to pray about it? How would you tell them to go about going, if they should go, that type of thing? Okay. Yeah, I, I thought about, I, I knew this question would come. 
because um, Karen has been telling us about this for years. And am I the first one from this church to go with you? Yeah, I thought so. And I've been hesitant for years as well. Uh, I did feel God telling me, for some odd reason, it's Peru, you've got to go with her to Peru. Um, I was scared. I was nervous. I spoke no Spanish. I thought, this is going to be overwhelmingly hard. So if you're, if you're thinking those thoughts, you're in good company. I think most of us feel that way. And I would say, do it anyway. It was nowhere near as scary as I thought it would be, nowhere near as hard. Yes, we work hard because those people deserve it, but we were fine. We all made it through just fine. So if you're thinking about it, do it. If it's too expensive, pray about it. If God wants you to go, he'll, he'll find the funds for you. It's not cheap, but it is worth it. And you just come back with your heart changed. And I know that's so cliche, but it's still so true. So that my follow-up question to you was, how did this change you? Not just your heart, but how did this change you? Your thinking, your heart, your being, your spirit, your relationship with God, everything. Well, I came back with a, new, a renewed gratitude because um, we live a life of absolute opulence here compared to there. And I'm so grateful for what he has given us. But I'm also aware that we have way too much. <laughs> And I mean, if we have to donate to thrift stores, we have way too much. If we have public storage, we have way too much. Get rid of it. So give it away. People need, need stuff. But he changed my heart in that I, I feel grateful for what I have. I feel love for the people. I, I just feel like this is one very precious lady and I have a much bigger appreciation for you than I had before. And I did have it before. <laughs> but. Um, I'm, I'm very glad I went. This was, was my second. First, we went to Jamaica many, many years ago with our Minnesota church. And we worked at an orphanage for uh, handicapped children. Now, that's an eye-opener. But that was wonderful as well. And I, then you come home, and you're looking at your healthy child, and you're so grateful. You know? So I think the biggest thing is he just grew my gratitude in so many ways. And Karen, follow-up question for you. Um, you've been doing this for years. Um, tell us a little bit about Healing Hands his healing hands and then also how has doing missions changed you because you're a nurse how has this changed your work that you do here in the states and how has going on these missions changed you your relationship to god all that you know everything that's a lot of questions i don't think i'll remember all of them i'm old but um to me i've been doing this since 2008 and I've been, to, been blessed enough to go to many, many countries and see many people. But the one thing that really stands out that God has really pointed out to me, as you can see with some of these pictures, is that these people in other countries are no different than us. They really aren't. We're all made by God. We all have his thumbprint on the middle of our foreheads. He made us. And so I think that was one of the realizations that, you know, it's fear of the unknown when you first go out. And you know, I don't know the people. I don't know the language. It doesn't matter. They're God's children. And that's one of the things that brought it home to me with all the missions that I've been on. God has opened all kinds of doors for me since I've done this with my nursing career. He put me in different places. That I had no idea why he did that. I wanted to be a nurse and take care of sick people. He put me in administration. Okay. I don't like numbers. He put me in finance. <laughs> I, you know, and I'm like, okay, God, you do have a sense of humor. We're going somewhere with this. And now I've been blessed enough to help build a health center in Terrapoto. And all of those steps that I kept saying, God, what is up? He was leading me here. So my biggest takeaway is don't worry about what you're doing in the future. Today is the day that God made. You didn't make it. He's in charge of it. He's got control of this day. Dance and dream and ask him to lead you where he wants you to go. Delight in him, as the Bible tells you to do. Delight in him, and he will see that your plans succeed. Amen. Amen. I think that's our sermon for today, House. <laughs> Forget it. Um, and this is why we love Karen so much. Um, her heart is just, she loves Jesus so much. 
and I knew part of that story. I didn't know all of it. I mean, that now that you're getting to help build a center in Terrapota, that is amazing. And how God, because I remember all those struggles when, why am I in administration? I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Now God moved me to find it. It's like, uh, Lord, and you would stop one job, and you're like, now what? And God would bless you with another, even though it wasn't something you wanted to do, but building up to this point in time where now you can really put all that knowledge to use. And that's what God does. When we go on mission trips, he uses every single thing. Yeah. Would it be okay if Karen took some time to tell, talk about this health center? Because there's yeah. something very unique about it that is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we bought a building through His Healing Hands here in California, and His Healing Hands was started by Dr. Warren Frankel, who's a physician, who took his medical bag back 30 years ago, went on a plane to China, and sat on a corner and started treating people in China. He didn't know any better. He kind of doesn't know any better now, <laughs> but that's how he started out. And so His Healing Hands started out a long time ago with his vision that it was just him, and it's grown into this. Well, now we're developing what we call a health center called Mano Sanadoras de San Martin. And what it is is His Healing Hands of San Martin, which is outside of Terrapoto. Got a three-story building that looked like a warehouse. Flat floors, 6,600 square feet. And they said, Karen, you know, we need some help. We're gonna be doing construction. Do I look like <laughs> I do construct? Look at my hands, I don't even have calluses. So I've said, all right, you know, let's take a look. So we met with architects, we met with lawyers. We built our own foundation in, in Terrapoto. And it's been an amazing experience, but what we're going to be doing is going to be a free clinic for women that's going to be testing them for HPV, the human papillovirus, and to try to determine precancerous cells, cervical cancer prevention. What we found out in Terrapoto and in Peru as a whole is that the incidence of cervical cancer death rate is higher in Peru by 10% to the United States. So what one of our doctors, Dr. Liu, decided is that he would invest in this building. He gave a donation for the building. We're in the middle of construction right now. I'm going back on Saturday to buy equipment, to hire a physician, to get things ready because the building is almost done. But we will be doing this free for the women of that area. And we'll also be doing counseling and evangelism with the church that's in Terrapoto. So we're hoping that we can not only prevent cancer, but also save lives for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, and one, one thing you should know is that it, it's a safe place for these women to come to get tested because there is this erroneous thought out there that if a woman ends up with HPV or cervical cancer, husband believes that she cheated on him. And that is so not true. And so they have to find a way to get these women in there without their husbands thinking the wrong thoughts. Because, you know, it's not their fault if they have this. It just happens to them and they need to get treated. And um, there, it's a three-story building, which is really cool. The downstairs will be all medical offices from what I understand. Second floor is all residences, so uh, people who come to help, like physicians, nurses, whoever, they have a place to stay, a, a home to live in while they're there, and they can come for what, a week, a month, a year, whatever they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then the top floor is, is wide open, and at this point, a church is actually worshiping there, which is really cool. So this health center is super, super important. I think I heard the number 90% of the deaths can be avoided if they can get tested. So that's huge, and I'd love to see our church get on board in supporting them in some way, because these women need our help. And uh, it's, it's an amazing place. Uh, you guys dreamed big, and it's going to be so important for that city and for their women. And we have everything we need here, but they don't. So let's, let's help them out. That was going to be my question, Karen. How can we help? OK, His Healing Hands has a website. And on there, it says Donate Now. If you click on there, it will go open up another screen for you. You go down to the middle of the screen and it has another drop down and it'll say Mano San Andorus. If you donate to the Mano San Andorus, we'll make sure that that money front through his healing hands goes to the Peruvian government or goes to the Peruvian Mano San Andorus Foundation. 
So, and you, it is tax deductible if you're donating through his healing hands to the Peruvian um, Foundation. If you were to donate directly to the Peruvian Foundation, it isn't tax deductible. So we do want you to go through his healing hands so we make sure that that's okay with you guys to, for tax deductible. But um, yeah, and if you have any questions, please call me, text me, whatever you need, whichever way, email is okay. I'm not always on there since I did left my job in about a year ago. I'm not always on email, but I am on my phone all the time. So please just give me a call if you want to know how to donate to it, and I'll be glad to guide you through it. Well, thank you, Wendy and Karen. Thank you for sharing. Weren't they great? Yay! Yes, you can go sit down, Karen.